Do you want to bring some old school crunch and grit into your modern 5e game? Nave is a rules light OSR TTRPG that's written in a clever way so it's compatible with other systems if you want to bring over your favorite BX or AD&D or whatever monsters. And I'm going to explain to you how you can adapt and straight up steal some of its best rules to add into your D&D or Pathfinder game. This is GM Jim, and let's get into it. Our first rule to steal is the very simple D20 vice table. Roll a 20-sided die and you get a vice like deceitful, reckless, or whiny. Hopefully you don't get whiny because no one at the table wants to see you roleplay that. 5e has ideals, bonds, and flaws to help round out your character, and I think those are actually pretty worthless. They're all too abstract to mean anything. You tell me, which is better? When faced with a choice between money and my friends, I usually choose the money versus greedy. They both mean basically the same thing, but one is concise and explanatory, while the other is wordy and abstract. I much prefer the concise option when filling out a character sheet. Next is something I've seen in a few old school games, and that's the D6 initiative. At the beginning of combat, the players and the enemies each roll a D6. 1 to 3, bad guys go first. 4 to 6, good guys go first. Then they work out among each side who's going to go in what individual order. But here's the kicker. Nave says to re-roll initiative each round. That means the bad guys might end up going twice in a row, which could swing things in a major way. That single D6 roll then becomes pretty significant. Should you re-roll initiative in each round of 5e? No, probably not, since that would slow things down quite a bit with all that bookkeeping. But you may do something like allow a nat 20 to act twice on that first turn, or give certain speedy monsters the ability to go again when it's not their turn, effectively like legendary or lair actions. Third on our list to steal from Knave is stunts and advantage. Hear me out. Stunts are like combat moves with tripping, shoving, disarming, and that kind of stuff. In 5e, it's battle master territory, basically. And Nave has the same concept of advantage like 5e, that is, roll 2d20 and keep the highest when the situation calls for it. Nave is a clever way of giving PCs a choice when it comes to advantage. The rules state, when a character has advantage against an opponent on their combat turn, they may either A, apply advantage to their attack roll or stunt against that opponent, or B, make an attack and a stunt attempt in the same round against that opponent without advantage. I love this choice aspect. Do you roll with advantage and increase your chances of hitting, or do you try to do two things on your turn instead? In 5e, when a PC has multi-attack, they can forgo one of their attacks to do a move like a grapple. But I like this idea of being able to spend your advantage on doing an extra thing, or maybe even giving yourself disadvantage to do the extra thing. Say you're a first level fighter with only one attack. You could bargain with the DM to give yourself disadvantage on the attack in exchange for being able to follow up either the hit or miss with an elbow that pushes the enemy back 5 feet. And it makes narrative sense too, I think. If you're trying to do more in the same amount of time, it should be harder and therefore with disadvantage. It just depends if you're the type of DM who likes to make these sorts of devil's bargains or not. Speaking of the bargain, I will always remember a very distinct moment in Critical Role's sideshow, Exandria Unlimited, when Abria Iyengar ran combat for the group, first or maybe second time she'd done it. Liam O'Brien, who's probably only ever played with Matt Mercer as a DM, rolled to attack. He missed, and Abria said, well, how bad do you want that attack to hit? And he looked at her like, what sort of heretofore unknown DM trickery is this? And she offered him a devil's bargain to add five to the attack roll, but he would end up prone or in the water or something like that. Great fun. Now let's talk about weapon and armor quality. Yes, we're going to be diving into Breath of the Wild and Tears of the King territory here. I know how many of you straight up hated how weapons degrade and break in these Zelda games. It never bothered me personally, but I do get why it's so polarizing. Anyway, in Nave, weapons and armor come with a quality score, and a nat 20 attack can degrade armor by one quality point. Also, a nat 1 on an attack does the same to the weapon. Now, unlike Zelda, these items can be repaired for a cost, so you can keep your favorite set of plate mail around as long as you do the upkeep and maintenance on it. And how would this work in D&D or Pathfinder? I think it would be too much clerical work to make every piece of armor and every weapon degrade and eventually break. Might be too much bookkeeping. But again, I do like the idea of using a kind of bargain here. 
Say you're a fighter with a regular longsword. You meet a strange, mystical blacksmith in the woods who says he can turn your ordinary longsword into a flame tongue longsword, but doing so will make it brittle. If you roll three nat ones, it will break, and as it degrades, the only way to repair it is to bring it back to him for a tune-up, or maybe you can fix it on a long rest with 300 gold worth of diamond dust or something like that. But the point here is to offer an improvement with a risk attached. You can see what a big fan I am of the Devil's Bargain, because for me, those tough choices are a huge part of the game's fun. Number five on our list is no dump stats. This is a very clever twisting of simple rules. While Nave uses the standard six stats of strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma, it moves a few of the sub-abilities around among these stats to prevent you from so easily picking one to dump. Like there are a few skills we would normally associate with dexterity that have been moved. Picking locks is considered an intelligence skill, and ranged attacks is a wisdom skill, finding secret doors is a wisdom skill, carrying capacity is based on constitution. Now how does this apply to D&D? If you're using the standard array of 15, 14, 13, 12, 10, and 8, one of your stats is going to get a negative one modifier, your dump stat. And we all know what's getting dumped. Your casters are going to probably dump strength, your marshals are probably going to dump charisma or maybe intelligence, and this is fine. It's part of the game's balance to make sure that you're not good at everything. But I think dungeon masters should take note of which, if any, stats get dumped. And from time to time, make sure you're poking at and testing those characters on those abilities. Make the fighter make the persuasion check. Make the wizard try to bend the prison bars with their bare hands. Maybe this sounds punitive, but the point is if that players only ever use their PC's strong abilities, the game can feel flat and possibly even boring. And when that fighter does roll a nat 20 persuasion check, it'll feel pretty awesome at the table. Number six on our list is the classless system. In Nave, there are no character classes, so you can be a sword swinging fighter one session and a spellbook reading caster the next. The game text says a PC's role in the party is determined largely by the equipment they carry. Now this won't work in 5e and Pathfinder because class is deeply baked into the PC's identity. But I think we can steal the spirit of this rule and remember that sometimes it's good to just mix it up. Maybe one session, the players drop into a portal and end up in the Feywild and everyone switches character sheets until the end of the evening. Why not? Do crazy stuff from time to time and let people explore and branch out. Have a TPK? Let the players roll up new characters with new classes and have a mini arc with the new party about going off to recover the bodies of the old party. Give players wild temporary consumable magic items that let them do new things. This is a fantastic way to break out of a rut if you ever find your group in one. I could also talk about gear slots, but I feel like I covered that in my Shadow Dark video, so just go watch that one. And that means this is a good place to wrap things up. Nave is a fun, rules light system designed to accept content from many other types of systems, and I feel like it's got clever mechanics you can adapt and steal to add into other games. So you should do that, or just play Nave. Try it out. And until next time, I'm GM Jim. Now go out there and spend a few copper working those nicks and scuffs out of your longsword. Have fun.